It might seem a little bit surprising to you that I say that geocentrism is present in the church from antiquity to the present day. You might say, hmm, wait a minute, geocentrism in the present day? Nobody, nobody actually thinks that geocentrism is true anymore. Well, that's not, that's not correct. There are Christians out there, there are not very few in number, but there are Christians out there who strongly believe that geocentrism is the proper way to view science from within a Christian perspective. So they hold that the Bible is the inspired and inerrant word of God. Geocentrism actually holds that the earth is absolutely static and unmoving at the center of the universe, and that the entire universe rotates around the earth once every 24 hours. They feel that the universe is young, about six to 10,000 years old, and they feel that current scientific ideas, such as heliocentrism, the notion that the sun is the center of our solar system, Big Bang cosmology, geology, and evolution, and the like are wrong, scientifically incorrect, and harmful to Christians. They feel that scripture is best interpreted in its plain, literal sense. So interestingly, sort of key individuals, this particular position on origins can claim a long history within the church. And the reason for this is prior to the work of Copernicus and Galileo, everybody was geocentrist. So, therefore, by default, all the church fathers, early church fathers, would have been geocentrists. The, the authors of scripture themselves likely would have been geocentrists, and so on. So, what's interesting is theologians up until the time of Copernicus remained geocentrists, but there was a large number of them that remained geocentrists after Copernicus as well. So, here's one geocentrist from the past. This is Martin Luther. Martin Luther lived at a time when Copernicanism this idea that heliocentrism might be a new, a new way of thinking about how the solar system was organized, uh, lived, and he, this, here's his take on it. So he says, you know, there's talk of a new astrologer. Astrology was the way of talking about astronomy back in that time. He wants to prove that the Earth moves and goes around instead of, the, instead of the sky, the sun, and the moon, just as if someone were moving and the character ship might hold that he was sitting still and at rest while the earth and the trees walked and moved. But that is how things are nowadays. When a man wishes to be clever, he must invent something special, and the way he does it must needs to be the best. The fool wants to turn the whole art of astronomy upside down. However, as Holy Scripture tells us, so did Joshua bid the sun to stand still and not the earth. So the Joshua 10 narrative is a key uh, passage that gets argued over at this time. In the, in the heliocentrist, geocentrist debate, and it was felt that proper interpretation of Joshua 10 would not permit a heliocentric reading. So that was right around the time when these ideas were new in the church. Here's a later apologist. This is John Edwards. John Edwards is not uh, Jonathan Edwards, the Puritan theologian that you might be thinking of. Sometimes there's confusion on this point. So what does John Edwards say? Say he says the Copernican opinion, so heliocentrism, seems to confront a higher principle than that of reason. So reason, science, you know, reasoning. He says, look, Copernicanism hits up against something that is higher than reason. He says if we speak of men of religion and as such own the Bible, so own it in the sense of we acknowledge it as our authority, we must acknowledge that their assertion is against the plain history of the Holy Book. For there we read that the sun stood still in Joshua's time and went back in King Hezekiah's. So Joshua 10 there again in view, and also um, the miracle where Hezekiah asks for the sun to go back up the stairs as a sign from God. So Edwards continues, he says, Now this relation is either true or false. If it be the latter, then inspired scripture is false, which I take to be as great an absurdity as any man can be produced to. If it be the former, i.e. if the relation is really true, then the sun hath a diurnal motion about the earth, for the sun standing still would not be a strange and wonderful thing as it is here represented, unless its general course was to move. So what Edwards is basically saying at this point, and now this is, you know, this is, what, a good 80, 90 years after Galileo, even. We've already had Newton publishing on, you know, Newton's Principia has already been published about the laws of gravitation and whatnot. And Edwards is holding the fort on geocentrism and saying that you can have geocentrism and scripture, but you cannot have heliocentrism and scripture. They simply don't go together. They have a very consistent hermeneutic about how they approach the Bible. 
Their disposition to other groups is generally a view that those outside their group are compromisers, that they've compromised on the authority of scripture. The geocentrists will criticize young earth creationists by saying, well, you have a general literal hermeneutic, sure, but there's a couple of verses that you're ignoring, and you're ignoring the geocentric implications of those verses. So Joshua 10 is a key example, the Hezekiah miracle is another one, and Psalm 104.5 there is an example. When we read this verse now, in the present day, you know, that God sets the earth on its foundations and it will not be moved, we don't think of that in scientific terms as speaking to whether or not the earth moves or not. But it very much was felt to be that, speaking to those concerns, prior to the work of Copernicus and Galileo. So, in terms of weaknesses, oh, sorry, another strength, of course, is that it has a long history within the church. Now, of course, this view would have a long history within the church. It had an uninterrupted run of about 1,600 years within the church before uh, Copernicus and Galileo came along. So, in some ways, it, it, geocentrism has bragging rights on that front. They have the longest uninterrupted theological agreement of any of the views that we're going to discuss tonight. 